What is the moment you realized you were dating a keeper? Please like, subscribe and comment so I can create more videos for you. My mom died unexpectedly when I was 20. I'm 29 now and sometimes still have a real difficult time dealing with the emotions of losing her. One year right around her birthday, I was feeling pretty blue. I came home from work on her actual birthday and he was standing in the kitchen holding a cake he had baked, complete with a lit candle, and said just because she died doesn't mean we can't celebrate that she lived. I just sobbed and he held me close until I had cried it out. Then we celebrated her life. Every year since then, he has bought her a birthday card and we light a candle to remember her. He's an amazing man. Edit. Forgot a word edit again. Thank you so much for the gold. Kind redditor. You made my day. I'll pay it forward. Soon. About a month in. My father was going through some stuff that made us think he might have cancer and the doctors ran a bunch of tests. While this was going on I was having lunch with her one day and related to her that I was in no way ready to find out that my dad had cancer, and how much that scared me. She listened and sympathized and told me not to worry, she was great. About a week later I was eating alone in a bar near my place while she was at a graduation party with her family I was a semester behind, not a good student. I get a call from her and can barely understand her through the tears. All she can really tell me is that she'd like to be picked up. I go to get her and on the ride home she spills her guts. Turns out her father was in the middle of a battle with brain cancer, and her mother had not done a good job of preparing her for how much worse he had gotten since she had seen him last. It was more than she could handle in a public setting like that. It was then that I realized what kind of person she is. She sat there and listened to me going on and on about how scared I was for my father, and she chose to support me instead of telling me just how little I knew about what it means to be losing a parent. She is the most beautiful, caring and selfless person I know. Every day I'm with her I become a better person. We've been together now for 4.5 years, married for 1.5 and I still fall more in love with her every day. I personally don't have those moments that people talk about when they know it happened. I usually remember the progression. For me though, one day I kind of realized I had been thinking about us all the time. What I mean by that is before we met, I had plans and visions of traveling to different places and doing different things. I would hike the at and cycle across America. I would go to new cities and find a great job. I would have all these adventures and meet all these people. I was going to have a blast. I stopped thinking and I at some point. Those thoughts became us having all these adventures. We would travel to a new city and start a life. We would do this awesome thing and go to this awesome place. We would have a great life. She snuck her way into my life and I didn't even know it. When I realized that, I realized that was exactly what I wanted. She was exactly what I wanted. We are exactly what I want. I have a serious question because I don't know the answer right now. I used to think I could do all the things you wanted, travel, leap around, meet new people, thinking in the eye. Then I met her. It made me think of us, an actual purpose in life of something to life for greater than myself. Work and everything I hated doing before became great because I knew it was what was good for us for the future. We were thinking of all the adventures we could share and, places we could go create a life together. She was my fiance. We were creating a life. I lost her and I don't really know where to go now. I lost my purpose what drove me daily and I don't know what to do anymore. Going back to that find a new hobby, change routine, travel around, change my environment thing, go to the gym. I have done do all of that but it's selfish and I still feel empty missing that purpose. Once you experience love and the feelings you discussed above, there isn't anything like that. Does anyone have some advice? Edit, I apologize for hijacking your beautiful description of love to tell my sob story. But your description hit a spot in me that I tucked away and haven't felt in some time. I was not expecting the incredibly kind and thoughtful comments in return. The fact that you all would spend the time to do that means so much to me. I don't even know you and you all have given me more time than the people close in my life. I haven't felt emotional comfort in some time like that. I don't have the words to say thanks.
My older sister came to visit when I first began dating my girlfriend. I had told my girlfriend how close I was to my sister, and how wonderful she was. Previous girlfriends had found my sister threatening because of our closeness. My girlfriend couldn't come over, due to obligations, until about 10pm on the evening my sister arrived. My sister was in the guest room in bed, beneath a mosquito netting. I live in the tropics. When my girlfriend and I walked in the room, she lifted the netting, crawled in next to my sister and gave my sister a big hug, telling her how happy she was to meet her. They have been close ever since, and my girlfriend and I have been married now for 24 years. That she still smiles every time we kiss. Just like the first time, every time. Wouldn't trade it for anything. We'd been dating long distance for a few months, and then one night he surprised me by popping over unexpectedly. I leaped out the door and attached myself to him. Hadn't really realized how much I needed him before that. He moved in right then, and it's been the best 12 years of my life since. That exactly how I felt when my boyfriend surprised me. I didn't think I'd see him for over a month, and then he booked a surprise flight from Pittsburgh to Boston and conspired with my landlord, she picked him up from the airport, and I have never felt more loved by anyone. My boyfriend was an Eagle Scout who collected rocks when he was little. He had purchased a heart-shaped tiger's eye from Disneyland when he was a tot, and kept it hidden with the intention of gifting it to the girl he was going to marry. One night, when I was almost asleep he asked me if I would want a promise rock. This is the first he had mentioned the rock, and in my sleep talking haze, I didn't understand and kept repeating, promise gravel. How romantic. Months later he gave me the rock for Christmas, despite my sleepy subconscious being a real kill, joy. It is the single most sentimental object I own and is a physical symbol of all the incredibly romantic things he has done for me. My boyfriend and his family have this little ritual where they squeeze each other's hand three times to signify I love you, four times as a return to signify I love you too. I didn't know that he had told me he loved me in this secret family way until after we told each other with words how we felt. All that time he'd been telling me he loved me and I was, never saying it back because I never knew, not to make a big deal out of it, not to get me to say it back, not because he wanted anything but just because he wanted to tell me he loved me in his own special way. When I found that out I think I realized that this was more than love. I don't know if this will mean anything to anyone but me but I think it's painfully romantic and, it makes my heart hurt. It was my birthday. I came home from work and was going to shower and change because she had said that we had reservations at an ice restaurant. We didn't really have much money and I didn't really feel like going out, but my birthday gave us a good excuse to splurge a little, so I wasn't complaining. As I opened the door, she was standing there waiting for me. In her hands, she was holding a plate on which sat a BLT with, I shit you not, a full pound of bacon on it. She directed me to the couch where she had a bourbon waiting for me. When we sat down to eat, she hit play on the DVD player and Fellowship of the Ring started playing. We finished our sandwiches and she turned to me with a slightly ashamed look and confessed, I'm sorry but I don't have a cake for you. That's okay, I said. This was already perfect. She took our plates to the kitchen then returned to refill my bourbon. She went back in the kitchen and turned on the sink to wash the plates. Two minutes later, she walks in the living room with a beautiful, homemade peach pie, birthday candles and all, my absolute favorite dessert on the planet. It seems so small, but to me, it was enormous. She knew me. She knew exactly how to make that day special for me. I remember looking at her that night and knowing, with total certainty, that I was going to marry that woman. When he showed up on my doorstep with wine in San Francisco after driving 8 hours as a surprise. Somehow he managed to keep it all a secret till he was there. I thought I wasn't going to get to see him at all that summer. His reason. He. Just missed me. When I realized he'd never broken a promise to me, no matter how big or small. He said he'd be there at 3. He's there at 3. He said he'll take out the trash. It is done ouch. Mine never does what he says, and it's driving me insane. He's perpetually late, 
he forgets the most basic things, and the worst thing is, he doesn't do it on purpose. When I pooped her bed, was deathly sick, some kind of food poisoning, and had literally no control over anything. Woke up covered in poo, and just said oh my god and ran to the bathroom. Came back, and everything was already cleaned up. Fresh sheets, mattress flipped, and she never did anything but make sure I was okay. She's comfortable enough to clean up my poo. Keep her. Somewhat related. I was at a party with my boyfriend and his friends. I'm a major lightweight so I wasn't drinking much. His friends thought it would be funny to spike my drink. I would up puking all over and being somewhat dangerously incoherent. My boyfriend cleaned me up and stayed up with me all night, rubbing my back and emptying my puke bucket as needed. In the morning, he made me French toast and coffee, my go, to hangover cure. Anyone who can clean my puke and still find me sexy is a keeper. Early on in our relationship, I took her to visit my mom's house. While we were there, we started looking through some of my childhood belongings that were in boxes in the garage, and at one point I remembered that my favorite stuffed animal, a dog, that I had since birth was kept in there as well. By complete coincidence, my mom's actual dog had very recently managed to find my stuffed dog and had ripped it apart. There was a trail of stuffing leading outside to the dog house. I felt abysmal at seeing my favorite childhood toy destroyed like that, but I wanted to try and maintain my composure since this was still in the early days of my relationship with this woman. It was no use. My lip quivered and some decidedly unmanly tears were shed. This woman, this wonderful young woman, picked up the remains of my not stuffed anymore dog and said that she could fix it. And she did. His ears were forever lost and now he has sort of a two-face thing going on. But he's whole again and now I've passed doggy down to our son. Edit, thank you for the gold. Edit 2, turns out the stuffed dog is currently at my in-laws house, where my son goes each day while my wife and I work. I've asked grandma to either take a picture for me or bring it over tomorrow so I can take a picture. When I realized that I had spent two months straight with him, literally every single day, without getting sick of him. I've always been super independent and I usually got sick of people quickly. My relationships never lasted more than a few months. We've lived together for a little over a year, and I still get butterflies when I come home to him. I was in college, I was working to jobs, 60 hours a week. I met her on OkCupid. Okay she would come over and we would hang out, often we would watch a movie and I would fall asleep exhausted. She would put the covers over me, go downstairs, walk past the front door, through the dining room, the kitchen and into the computer room to say goodbye to my dad. Every time she left, she made sure to say goodbye to my parents. Edit, I as informed I didn't actually answer the ARPS question. The moment was when my father stopped me one day and told me something along the lines of for the last X time Samantha has been here, she has come down and said goodbye to me after you fell asleep on her. If you keep doing that you are going to lose her. This is such a big deal for me. My first serious boyfriend in college visited me at my family's house during summer break. He was there all day, had dinner with us, played a board game, etc. When he left, I walked him to his car and kissed him goodbye. I came back into the house, and my parents were confused. Did he leave? My mom asked. He didn't say goodbye to my parents or thank them for dinner. Oh my gosh. My husband and I met on eHarmony. I let him know from the start that I had a young child and he assured me that he was okay with that. My son was one, one stroke two months old when we met, long story and, when he came to pick me up on our first date, he brought my son a teddy bear that played music and a pack of cute Valentine's Day bibs. I thought that was a really sweet gesture. We had an amazing first date and we started dating regularly. He was there for me when I was going through the challenges of being a first time mother, trying to breastfeed and, ultimately, finding out I couldn't make enough milk to feed my child, and having to put him on formula, I was devastated. For a man I just met, I couldn't believe he was so willing to help in a situation where most men would turn tail and run. But, that wasn't the clincher. One night. 
He was sitting in the recliner at my parents' house holding my son and trying to burp him after a feeding. He had him propped up on his shoulder and was speaking to him softly. I don't think he thought I could hear, but I heard him say see Monday, little guy. Burp for daddy. After the circumstances surrounding how my son came to be, and all that I had been through in the recent months following up to his birth, I felt broken, like no one would ever want me, let alone truly love me and my child. I'm happy to say he proved me completely wrong. We've been together for almost 5 years, married for over 3, 1 stroke 2 years, and we're expecting baby number 3. We had been together for almost 2 years already and I loved him so much already. But I knew when we were in line at Subway and they asked him what kind of bread he liked and he said, Italian, paused, looked at me, and whispered that's the kind I like, right? I had been reading reddit posts like these before hopping into the shower, he was playing Dota. I kept thinking about how he never succeeds at trying to surprise me, he says he's no good at it and so doesn't even try anymore, and how I really wanted that. When I got out of the shower there was a plate of cut up apples with peanut butter and honey and a hot cup of coffee, he knows exactly how much cream and sugar are like, next to the bed. I felt both ashamed that I had wanted more from him and actually cried over this small gesture. I realized that he knew me well enough to know what I wanted. Early on in our relationship I was in and out of sleep one night and he's awake confessing his love for me to my cat. I don't remember everything he said but when I woke up the next morning with our bodies completely entwined with one another, with very little space between that's when I knew. The past 5 years we've been through it all and I wouldn't trade any of it for anything. She got us tickets to a hockey game on Valentine's Day. Edit, our wedding is in June. We had been dating for a little less than a year and I was crazy about him, but still had some reservations because we're young and who hasn't been hurt before. Well, my grandmother passed away late December and I got the call from my mom while he was at band practice. He knew how much he meant to me, so when I called him crying, he left immediately and held me. I felt so safe and comforted that I knew he was real special, but the funeral was what really sealed the deal. He had only met my grandmother once and it was when she was pretty far gone. I wasn't expecting him to come to the funeral because it was two hours away and he'd have to face crazy holiday traffic. He drove almost three hours, in horrible traffic in a very respectful suit to be with me for one hour, and even went through with meeting my entire extended family. He showed so much respect for me and for her that I knew I'd never find anyone else like him no matter how hard I tried. Posted before but it still holds true. She prefers pancakes while I prefer waffles. It was around midnight and I couldn't sleep so I snuck out to the store and bought a box of pancake mix to surprise her in the morning. I came back got into bed and nodded off. At one point I felt her get up and heard her go into the bathroom, I passed back out. We were sitting down to eat breakfast that next morning when I pulled out the pancake mix and said, I know how much you like pancakes so I snuck out last night and got this. She smiled, walked to the freezer and pulled out a box of eggs while saying, I don't have a waffle iron, so I bought these last night. That was the moment. Yes I get it, you think it's just like gift of the magi. Wow thanks for the gold kind stranger. I've read this before and it is still one of my favorite love stories. Edit, words because swipe motion is still new to me. I'd been dating this guy for 2 years and we'd broken up. For me, I think it was because things were getting too serious for my then 20 year old mind to handle. I moved to a different state for a year and a half and we'd completely lost touch. I then received news at 1 in the morning that my cousin had, passed away. 19 years old in a motorcycle accident. He was the closest thing to a brother that I had. I sat in my apartment sobbing until 5 in the morning when I get a message on Facebook. It's him, checking in on me and making sure that I'm okay. He sat there and chatted with me for an hour after not having heard from him for almost 2 years. I'd stopped crying for the first time since I heard the news and pulled myself together enough to get ready for the flight that I had just booked back home for the funeral and to be with my family. I'd invited him to the wake and the funeral services because I knew that they rode motorcycles together a couple of times and I wanted him to have the opportunity to say goodbye if he wanted to. 
he wouldn't have shown up if I didn't invite him. He's sweet like that, he wouldn't show up if he had any inclination that it would be at all uncomfortable for me. I'm the oldest of all my cousins and sisters in a nation family so it was pretty much put on me to hold it together and take care of the children because, the adults were dealing with everything funeral related. I didn't have much of an opportunity to break down and cry because I was instructed with being strong and taking care of everyone else. The minute I saw him at the wake, I went into his arms and cried for the first time in days. Like for loud sobbing. The entire time, he held me and told me that he was sorry, so sorry. It was like not a second had passed since we had last seen each other. We sat in his truck after the wake talking for an hour before I realized that we were the last ones there and I needed to be getting back. He took me to my aunt's house and promised to be at the funeral the next day. Not only did he attend the funeral but he attended the gathering at my aunt's house afterwards. After everything was said and done and I returned to my apartment in another state, we kept in touch and he helped me through a lot of my grief. I wound up moving back home to be closer to my family and help everyone out with the aftershocks of my cousin's death. We started dating again and it honestly never felt like we had broken up at all. We picked up right where we left off. So all I have to do to get my ex-girlfriend back is kill a family member. BRB. The feeling of emptiness when she's not around. It's easy to take your so for granted when you spend all of your time with them, but I knew she was the one when she left for 8 months. Every minute she was gone felt like half of me was missing. Work sucked, playing video games sucked, watching sports sucked. I went to visit her halfway through the term she was gone and that feeling of unification is indescribable. At the same time, turning and walking away from her to airport security was the hardest thing I've ever done, knowing it would be for long cold winter months before I could see her again. That was last Sunday. She'll be home for good in April when we'll move in together. Until then, back to reading us credit threads at work because I simply lack the motivation to do anything else. We lived in the same catered hall during uni, that's how we met. I'm not a morning person so I'd often sleep through breakfast. I knew I'd found an awesome guy when he woke up early went to the dining hall and then braved my scary morning moods to bring me hash browns, a juice box and a bacon sandwich in bed. Just because he liked me, no special reason. Edit to avoid any more PMs that miss the point. The point I was trying to make was, I felt he was a keeper when I realized he didn't restrict his gestures of love, big or small, to special occasions or events, valentines, birthdays, caring for a sick partner, date night, it was every day. Not to mention how thoughtful and sweet that gesture was. And still is, almost 8 years later he still makes me breakfast in bed. You know he is in it for the long haul when he gives up bacon to a woman he isn't married to. I came home from the bar with 3-4 drunken people at about 3am. This was her apartment and I had just moved in. We woke her up being drunk and rowdy. She came downstairs, made everyone some food and got beers. Took care of everyone till they sobered up or passed out. In the morning after everyone left she said to me. Don't you ever bring all those motherfuckers in my house at 3am without letting Emmy know, you're coming so I could have cleaned up. The moment she started telling me things that you know she doesn't tell everyone. And I started doing the same. When, after dating 2 months. We were walking back to my dorm after a night of drinking heavily and he reached up and grabbed a twig off of a tree and told me I have to keep it forever. Then 6 months later, his 3 year old son comes up to me and hands me a twig and tells me the exact same thing. They are 2 peas. After we were together for over a year I awoke one morning feeling stiff and a little sore so I got up to stretch. My back was covered in red lines from her fingernails and my chest and biceps were spotted with teeth marks. There was a knock on the door so I turned to see her come in with heart-shaped pancakes. When I realized every crazy idea I come up with, no matter how ridiculous, he always says, yeah let's do it. He says this regardless of whether he thinks it will actually happen or not, but always enthusiastic and supportive. I absolutely love it. It's his support that's led us to carry out the crazy whims. We always make travel plans and they take us to some amazing places. 
it's his willingness to follow me where I go and respect the things that I do no matter how outlandish that mean the world to me. When I after half a year of us dating, realized that this had been the most drama-less and yet still very passionate relationship I have been in. I have a history of very stormy relationships, and came to the realization, that maybe that is how I love. I have also tried to date guys where my feeling was less strong and found that I pretty soon would lose interest and respect. My current boyfriend, is the most fantastic guy, for many reasons, but he is a keeper because he and I can communicate like mentally healthy people. When I told him my absolute deepest darkest secret that I didn't think anyone would ever 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 be able to understand, and he got it. I was sure he was going leave me, but he accepted my flaws without hesitation. Watching the new Star Trek movie, she pauses at a critical moment in the film and says, who the hell is Khan? Can we watch the other movies so I can find out? My inner child nerd high five me. Fun fact. In the TV episode in which the Enterprise first meets Khan, Space Seed, Season 1, they give the number of people in Khan's crew, 72. This is the same number they use in Into Darkness for the number of torpedoes. When I realized that wherever he was felt like home. Edit, Gold. Now I am rich in love and karma. Thank you. I think it was when I had to move a cuddly Star Trek triple in order to get into bed with her. That was the moment. This sounds stupid but it was when I met his dad. He'd already talked to me at length about how much his dad meant to him, how much he loved and respected him. When he talks about his parents, he cried almost every time. And then I met his dad and was like, this is who my boyfriend is going to become. Wow. I was already married to him when I realized how truly amazing he was. It was the day our girls were born. Everything he did for me while I was in labor, how supportive he was, and then after everything finally seeing him holding our girls and the look on his face. It was all just absolutely perfect. While we were dating, when my wife saw my guitar in my room, she picked it up and started playing Stairway to Heaven, including the solo. If my GF did that, I'd cut her off and point to my no stairway sign and see if she got it. Then I'd know. He held my hand in the courtroom when they sent my rapist to jail. He is amazing. We're getting married in May. I've never been one to wear makeup before, I just wasn't raised that way, equally unfeminine mother, but I have a lot of insecurity about my appearance. I brought up wondering if I would look better with makeup. I expected him, as previous boyfriends I had considered the idea to, to try to dance around saying you're right, maybe you would look better. You should try it. Which invokes feeling like they don't like how I look already, even if they didn't mean it that way, dart. Without missing a beat he said if you think it would make you happy, you should give it a try. It felt like he solved some magic girl trap that I hadn't meant to set. As a single guy, I have no idea why I came to this thread. Regardless, the soccer jokes were pretty funny. Edit, or football for you Euro Redditors. Like many of us, you secretly long to know that love exists, and that others have found it, to reassure yourself that you too will find it one day. It was the worst day of her life. We'd known each other for years, and I did love her, very much so, and I was constantly amazed that I had found such a brilliant and beautiful whirlwind of chaos, who was willing to love my son as if it were her own. But I never realized how much I loved her until that day. She was working in industrial automation, and just came home from a business trip, she'd been coding on a live production site, which is exhausting and stressful and usually at very odd hours. She was tired and cranky, and when she opened the door, I had to tell her that the police had just called. Her family had been in a car crash, her mum dead, her father in a coma. On the two hour drive, she was looking so fragile, with her wide opened, green eyes, and she hugged herself into her mum's pullover, which somehow was so much more intimate, so much more painful to watch than tears. I'll never forget her trembling hands and how she clung to me, the desperate way we made love that night, that whimper that she tried to suppress, and how helpless I felt. But on the next day, she was changed forever. 
Gone was the quirky, nerdy girl, and here was a woman, graceful and elegant as her late mother, and she walked with a dignity and strength that I didn't know where it came from. I was just frozen and shell-shocked, and she was identifying the horrific something that was left of her mum, all alone, and I wasn't even allowed to be there. Later, much later she told me about the blood on the metal table, and how there was only half of her face left, and how she hadn't been able to stop shaking despite it was summer, about the police officer who handed her a purse and some bags, about the metallic smell that greeted her when she opened them. She organized the funeral, she arranged all kinds of legal things, she spent hours at her father's hospital bed, she went through all the bills and letters and finished the laundry and took out the garbage. She invited over a hundred people for the next day, called every single one, told them with a not quite steady voice that her mum was dead. In the evening, she took my son into the kitchen. She was wearing a pair of jeans and a simple black t-shirt, looking hauntingly beautiful and broken, with her tangled curls, her chopped lips, and her red rimmed eyes. I am going to teach you how to make chocolate cake, she said, taking his little hands into hers the way my grandmother was taught by her mother, the way my mother was taught by her mother, the way I was taught by my mother. She was 23. At that gesture, my heart went out for her more than she'll ever know. Eight years later, she still bakes that chocolate cake for us, and I watch her, her still untamed curls, and those gentle hands, and I fall in love all over again. When she found out about the real me and all my insecurities and flaws and mistakes, then still wanted to be with me. It was the second or third time we banged, I ran outside her house butt naked to throw the condom in the garbage across the street, came back inside to find her sitting naked on the floor where we left off, eating Pringles, we laid there all night and talked till morning, that's when I knew, edit, if you see this, Courtney, I love you. Everything felt natural and relaxed from the beginning. No drama, no stress, no worries. Felt like I'd known her forever even though we'd only been together a month or two. Becoming a couple almost instantly because we just were. Oh, and amazing sex. When we had our talk about the future. Me, so, hon. I suppose we should talk about kids. Ho, oh, no babies. Me, deal. Marital bliss. He takes all my bad sides and makes them seem like nothing, whatever I do, I am still perfect to him. To me, that is a keeper. It was our fourth date. I cooked dinner for her, New York strip on cream corn with arugula salad, and, when she was finished, picked up the plate to lick it clean. We were at the movies and the trailers were on. We'd only been dating a few months. Some born whatever trailer was on and she slowly leaned into me and whispered in my ear Matt Damon. The first time we slept together, I made her breakfast in the morning. She looks over at my box and asks me if I want to play Nazi zombies after breakfast. Wife to 10 months later. Edit, forgot a word. Upon opening this thread, preparing to feel lonelier in 3, 2, 1. This is such a common theme on Reddit. You guys have got to do your best to stop feeling so sorry for yourselves, and I say that with affection. There is somebody out there for you, if you ask me, there are multitudes of people that you could find such a special love with. But if you're too busy focusing on the love that has gone wrong or didn't happen, you'll miss the other opportunities. So much of life relies on how you perceive it. When I said I think I'm going to to play some Marvel vs Capcom 3 and then maybe run some dungeons in World of Warcraft and she replied not without me you aren't. Our wedding is in March. My boyfriend eats a lot. No question about it. One night, we went to a nice pizza place with my side of the family. We ordered a few square cut pizzas, enough to feed all 15 of us and then some. My boyfriend decided to take it upon himself to be that and then some. He takes almost a whole pizza, flops it on his plate, and stacks about four stacks with four pieces each. He then proceeds to chow down, pancake style. Ingenious, right? As it turned out, not really. After about 20 minutes, he taps me on the shoulder and I witness what looks like the palest face I've ever seen. I need to go home, he mumbles, 
putting his napkin up to his mouth every few seconds. Shit. So I tell my folks and I begin driving him home in my car, amazed that his stomach couldn't take it. It was quiet for a while. He looked horridly in pain, and then he turned to me. Alien child. Yeah. I'm going to have to fart. Oh number. It's been almost a year of us together and neither of us had farted while physically together. Well, we're almost to your house, can you try and hold it? Hillian child, it's happening. An orchestra of gases erupted in my car. I didn't even care that it was 30 degrees outside, the windows went down, air was put on full blast. It was pretty gross, and yet I could not stop laughing as he sat there curled up in the corner of the passenger seat with the most sheepish look on his face. We're still together after one, one stroke two years. I've learned to accept that he can keep an amazing figure while eating for three people, and he's learned that eating too fast turns him into a gaseous weapon. What can I say? Love? She asked what the name of my dick was. I told her Luke Skywalker. She gave a fake laugh and said lightsaber ha ha ha. I said no. It's because it'll split you open, crawl inside you, and stay warm for the night. Bitch replied Han Solo was the one who cut it open. I literally just mentioned this story in another topic. When I saw that her jersey was a different color from the rest of her squads. Edit, so where's my gold guys? I can just imagine you having your first date. It's going well. The two of you head back to her place and the clothes come off and, underneath her blouse she's wearing a different color jersey. Then she brings out the gloves and things get freaky. I knew who she was before I met her, there was a lot of buzz surrounding her. When I held her hand, I had trouble letting go, almost like there was a warm, sweet force keeping them together. On our second date, she wore all white with a unique hat that grabbed my attention and made it hard to discern her smoky eyes, but it meshed well with her face. She brought me over to her house and I felt a stinging sensation in my chest, evoking a swelling sensation of life and vibrancy I had never felt before. Finally, after what felt like a lifetime, she asked if I wanted to see her honeypot. I trembled with anticipation. I wanted to throw my hands in the air in victory. I knew in this moment that my suspicions were confirmed, my lady friend was a beekeeper. When I realize that he'll do anything to make me feel safe and happy, and he is only happy when I am. He once picked me up and carried me over a puddle without me asking, and always subconsciously walks between me and the road when we're walking near busy traffic. He's the absolute best and whenever I have to leave him or he goes back to school, I get this wave of intense sadness and loneliness. Clearly we're not meant to be apart. He was bobbing nervously in front of the three gold rings and saving the quaffle, 